Okay, so in this section, we're going to be talking about what coenzymes are and their uses in the metabolic pathway. Um, so this is one of the most common coenzymes here. It's just kind of to show you a structure of one. Um, so for example, this is coenzyme A, um, which is also, we can symbolize as CoA and then SH on the end, because you see that we have this thiol group over here, or you can switch the order. You could put HS CoA. That's what uh, these are symbolized as, but um, you see that this is just a specific um, molecule and you'll see what it'll do in a minute, but um, overall it's very similar to different things that we've seen. It has a lot of groups on it that we've seen before um, and it will be used for a very specific purpose in our metabolic pathway. So in our metabolic uh, reactions, um, these are reactions that all take place with an enzyme in, uh, at our body temperature, at our physio physiological pH. So we've talked about a lot of different things like oxidation and reduction reactions um, use, by using enzymes like dehydrogenases. Um, and these will often require something called coenzymes. So like that structure I just showed you, those structures are uh, necessary in order for this reaction to be able to occur. So for example, an oxidation reaction um, typically would have a coenzyme such as NAD plus or FAD. Um, so a lot of times they have these coenzymes that um, go along with them. So just as a reminder, enzymes are often named by the reaction that they do plus ACE. Um, so like a hydrolysis reaction is hyd uh, is catalyzed by a hydrolase enzyme. Um, so that will be easier for you to, if you remember that, to be easier to remember what each thing does. So an oxidation and a reduction reaction. So we learned about oxidations and reductions when we were back doing organic, um, the first couple chapters of the book, right? Or first couple chapters of what we did. We talked about oxidation and reductions, but it wasn't, we weren't really sure why at the moment, right? But the reason we talked about it is because that is vital to our body's processes and how we form ATP, ADP, how we use energy, everything like that. So when we extract energy from our foods, we're actually doing oxidation reactions. We talked about digestion, and that's breaking up the molecules into smaller bits, but that last part of metabolism, that stage three, is going to be oxidation reactions to um, actually get as much energy out of the foods that we can and form carbon dioxide typically in that, that Krebs cycle. So oxidation reactions involve the loss of H2, right? So we lose two hydrogens, two H pluses, and two electrons, or we gain oxygen. So remember we talked... Um, we had like an oxidation reaction where maybe we had an alcohol where we had these two hydrogens and these bonds, but then after the oxidation, we would then have a carbonyl plus H2. So this process um, overall, H2 is the same thing because it's H plus or H bonded to H, right? So there's two H pluses on either end and then two electrons in the middle. So it's the same way of saying it. So in an oxidation reaction, we either gain a bond to an oxygen, we can think of it like that, or we can think about it as losing two hydrogens. Um, so always and forever when we do this, we're gonna have a compound get oxidized into its oxidized compound plus two hydrogens. Uh, typically, the reason we need coenzymes is so that we have something for to pick up those hydrogens. So the enzyme itself cannot pick up those hydrogens because then it has to give them to something else, right? Then it wouldn't be really a catalyst. A catalyst is reformed in a chemical reaction. So we need our coenzymes as a way to kind of be like our transport or kind of be our trash can, kind of, <laughs> not necessarily because it gets used for other things, but um, it needs to be 
our acceptor for the things that we're losing when we do these catalyzed reactions. Um, so oxidation and reduction uh, metabolic pathways. So overall, remember that oxidation, you lose electrons, you lose hydrogen, but you gain oxygen bonds, gain bonds to oxygen and increase the number or increase the number of bonds to oxygen. Uh, and then it'll be opposite for reduction. So when you reduce something, you gain electrons, you gain hydrogen, you lose oxygen, or you lose a bond, number of bonds to oxygen.